I nearly burst through the doors of the class building the moment I'm done with my bio final. I'm free! I'm free! I've officially completed my first college semester ever. I'm so giddy that I want to jump in the air, but there are too many people around to do that. I have to pretend I have at least some shame. None of my tests have ever been that hard. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I can head out to Christmas break without worrying about my dumb grades. But I won't be heading back to California for a few days. For now, I'll just kick back and relax the best I can. Yeah, school's over. But I haven't forgotten about that creep who claims to be after me. It's really weird. It's been so long since they last tried to contact me. I wonder what's up with them. I shouldn't get too comfortable. If they're really the abductor, they might be up to something as I speak. I groan louder. I groan loudly and start walking. Man, I need to chill out. I was just in the middle of saying how I was going to relax. And now I'm thinking about those abductions again. It's only when I see him sitting on the bench that my thoughts drift elsewhere. Ted leans back against the bench, leg folded over the opposite thigh. I see that he's reading something in his hand, but he takes his eyes off it every so often to scan the people walking past him. Is this why he asked what time my final was going to be? I'm giddy again, but for a whole other reason. I hurry and skip closer to him. Ted! I wave to catch his attention, the corner of his lips rise in a smile. Look at here, I wasn't expecting you for another half hour. I was surprised, what could I say? I must be a bio genius. Cock, cute, cock is never cute, but you know, well, but I'll make an exception for you. Grinning, I lean over to peck at his unsuspecting lips, catching him by surprise. Shucks. Thanks. Ted glares back at me in embarrassment. I'm not sure whether it's because I copied his accent or because I kissed him. He is such an old man. Even though we're dating, there's no PDA ever for anything. At, at least want a guy. But you're so cute when I get flustered like that. He yells at my teasing, making me giggle. Mercifully, I take a seat beside him and peer over his shoulder at what he's reading. What you got there? It's a book on all the clubs available here on campus. I got it from the student service building. Ted angles the pages so I can get a better look. Wow. I didn't know our school had so many clubs. The names and descriptions endlessly lined down the page with some action shots thrown in here and there for good measure. And the font's not even that big. Now that the shop's closing down, I gotta be left with more free time than I'm used to. So I figured, heck, why not join a club? I could join a sports team, too. The lacrosse team looks mighty interesting. Ew, please don't join a sports team. Why is that? Because organized sports are gross. Plus, if you joined, I wouldn't be able to join with you. I hug Ted's arm and squeeze. If you really want to rock out with your jock... If you really want to rock out with your jock out, at least make it an in intramural club. I think most teams are co-ed. Ted stunts speeches for a few seconds for words. If you want to rock out with your jock out, that's... Gonna have to use that somewhere in life. A few seconds before his words come out in his usual babbling mess. You join a club with me. I wasn't thinking of forcing you or nothing. I wouldn't hate it either, but I wasn't sure if it was the kind of thing you were into. Well, duh, I'm your girlfriend. At least I, uh, I should at least try to be into what you're into. But you better join a really cool club or it's a no-go. I lean off Ted and jokingly cross my arms. Sorry, I don't make the rules here. Ted chuckles and shakes his head, looking more motivated than he was before. I'll come up with something, little Miss Picky. I smile as Ted agrees, but then I jolt straight up in my seat. Oh, I nearly forgot. I set my bag beside me so I can get out my phone. I need to call my mom. I promise I'd tell her how the test went after I finished it. Watch my bag. I'll be back in a sec. Sure. I don't want to bother Ted with my conversation. It shouldn't take too long anyway. But when I'm trying to call my mom, I get sent to her voicemail. I guess she's busy. I'll just leave a message. Hey, mom. Just calling to say the test went great, and uh, I guess that's it. Call me back when you get this. My phone surprises me by suddenly buzzing against my fate, and I hastily finish the message. Okay, bye. I love you. Was that a text from someone? No, it was another email, and it's from Roller again. Ugh, what a right one. Okay, we're gonna get the abductor one. Coming to get you. Alright. The day has come, and the fight or flight, the day has come. I take back everything I said about not being too scared. I nearly hop down, blah blah, December. We down. We make the first strike. What are the main about it? Wait, do they mean the band building? Yes, this is why they called me out. Are they so confident that they me? I swallowed my anger. I don't know what's going on in their head, but they made a big mistake of their life. I'm not gonna do banana. But wait, Ted's waiting waiting for me out there. I glance over in his general direction. Part of me wants to tell him about this, but I know I can't. I can't get him wrapped up in this mess, too. I'll have to do this as discreetly as possible. It's gonna be hard to keep my cool in front of him. Ted's pretty perceptive when it comes to this stuff. If I'm just, if I'm just the slightest bit off from my normal game, he's gonna pick up on it like a snap of my fingers. <laughs> hey, you look like... Hey, look, they have a club of ballroom dancing. As he... As he picks up on my return, Ted shows me a page on his brochure, points at a certain section. I'm way too frazzled at the moment to care, but I do my best to pretend. I'm sure I'd like it in any, like it in any other circumstance. <laughs> yeah, that's cool, Ted. I hate post measles just as I drop shit on the floor. Open. Wow. 
I grabbed my bag from the bench and stand awkwardly in place. You're gonna have to say it eventually, Nicole. Keep it smooth. Uh, sorry, this is super short notice, but something came up and I have to go. I hold my breath as Ted responds with a furrow of his brow. Right now? Is it something serious? Yeah, I'll tell you about it later, promise. I just gotta go right now. Ted squints his eyes at me, and for a moment I think he's caught on. However, he soon goes back to reading about the school clubs. I won't hold you then. My chest clears of all that built up anxiety. As a consolation, I kiss Ted on the cheek before hurrying off through campus out into town. Head back to the abandoned building as I am, bringing my weapon. Bringing a weapon might have been good, sound but uh. Okay, can't be afraid. Alright, we're back in the building. <laughs> This is what I tell myself as I walk into the abandoned building. It was quiet, anything to pop out, at least expect. Especially about how dark it is, it's still afternoon, but it doesn't look like much light gets in at all. Wait, I can hear something. There's a corner. Uh, it must be the abductor. Footsteps, but they don't realize they leave me. I keep chase. The girl's screaming. Pull it wide open. Stop. Stop. But there's no one to stop. Okay, room is empty. Now, where's that sound coming? I check past the building, portable M3 paler. Scrolling, I press the stop button. I slam at the door behind me. Should have been obvious in retrospect of the trap. I fell for it like a big fat idiot. And this is happening. Somebody help me. I bang on the door. So let me out. It doesn't matter how hard. Blah, blah. After one final thump of my fist, I slump against the door and slide down to my knees. I should have been more careful. What am I going to do now? Entirely, I drop onto my bottom, lean back against the wall. I can't do anything. I can't even call for help. There's no signal here. All I can do is sit on my knees. Use the butt about my head. But there's a noise from the door, I think. No, that was definitely a noise from the door, and I can see the knob shaking from hit this side. The abductor's trying to get in here. It has to be. I leap to my feet. This is my last chance if I don't get him now. I press myself flat against the wall just as the door slowly swings out, creaking on its rusty hinges. All I have to do is go for the wrists. I let out a battle shout and leap blindly at the abductor from behind the door. Our limbs clash together, and I'm sure I've got a hold of their wrists, but suddenly their body twists, and in a flash, I'm the one with her wrist held against her back. Will you quit squirming around like that? It's me, you idiot! I go slack as I recognize Ted's wondrous, familiar, southern drawl. T Ted? Ted lets go a moment and I realize it's him. I can't believe it. It's really him. I don't even need to turn around so to know. How are you here? How did you find this place? It was simple enough. As really as I am to see Ted right now, that feeling disappears as I notice how scarily serious he looks. You were acting fishier than an aquarium back there at school. I thought something was up, so I followed you to this place. I got worried when I realized you weren't coming out anytime soon. I came in myself, and that's when I heard ruckus coming from over here. That must have been me. And hold on, you were following me? Ted, that's totally not cool. Come off it. You're only saying that now that the shoe's on the other foot. Even though we're so close, Ted points right at my chest. You were the one who was sneaking around first like some sort of rat. What the heck is going on, Nicole? Don't tell me you locked yourself in this room now. No, of course not. It's just complicated. I'm a smart guy. I'm sure I'll understand. But Ted, Nicole, for the love of explain, tell me what's going on. Ted grabs my shoulder and steadies me, so I'm looking directly in his, at his face. It's obvious why he's pressed, pressing me so hard to tell. He's worried about me. Damn it! This is exactly why I didn't didn't want to. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. It doesn't look like he's about to let go. I don't have much choice anymore, do I? Remember how I was looking into those disappearances earlier in the semester? It might be because I was scared I was going to be the next one abducted. It's a long story, but one day I started getting these weird messages on my blog. They told me I was going to be the next girl taken and that I should watch myself and stuff like that. So I started investigating on my own to fight back against this abductor. I nearly cracked their case and I thought I was going to put the final nail in the coffin today. But I guess the only coffin I nailed was mine. Earlier I, I got a message from the abductor. They sent me a message saying that if I didn't want to be taken, I'd have to get to them first. I showed Ted the last message I got that afternoon. Here, this is it. I've gotten four more before this, but I erased them. After Ted finishes reading, he takes a deep breath through the nose and exhales loudly. This... this has been going on for a while now. For how long now? Since the start of the semester? And I'm only hearing about it now. Ted's voice grows fr frighteningly louder than it was before. What the heck? Why are you getting angry? Are you seriously asking for that? Of course I'm gonna get angry. You're telling me straight to my face that you've never been... You've been dealing with this for months, months, and you never... I never thought to even mention it to me. I, I was scared, seriously scared, okay? And it's not like it involved you. I didn't want to drag you into this. That's a goddamn excuse and you know it. I back up and hit the wall as Ted advances on me. You're always like this, Nicole. From the moment I first met you, you've been self-absorbed in your own little world. I get it, sure. You're self-sufficient. Nicole does what Nicole wants and pardons to whoever decides to get in her way. But you can't be keep doing that. You can't do everything by yourself, you hear me? And why can't, why the hell can't I? I swat Ted's hands off me and push him back. 
I've been just fine up till now, right? I got all the clues and I was gonna get them. I know I was. Wake up and smell the coffee. This isn't Nicole land. All you did was get yourself locked in this room. If it wasn't so, if I wasn't so concerned about you damn near all the time, who knows what would have happened to you? All I can do is purse my lips and try not to break down. He's right, and that's just so infuriatingly embarrassing. Ted takes another deep breath, appearing way too tense after all that yelling. I'm not asking you to rely on me for everything. All I want is for you to rely on me when you need it. He awkwardly rubs the side of his arm. How do you think it feels knowing the girl you care most about in the world can't even count on you when she's in trouble? I... I groan in exp exasperation. I don't know. You're right. You're super right. I can't do this anymore. I uneasily exhale and start filling with my ponytail, unsure what to say in this awkward atmosphere. I know what I did was sucky, and I didn't mean to make it feel make you feel bad. I just didn't want to bother you. I didn't want to put you in danger, too. I just got caught up in the investigation, and I've been so stressed out with everything that's been going on, and I was so scared, like, 100% of the time, and... And... I take a deep breath and collapse into Ted's chest, hugging him tightly. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Please, please don't hate me for this. I nestle my face deeper into Ted's body, and it feels like I'm hugging a boar with how unresponsive he's being. He must be seriously mad at me. However, just when it looks like I'm, I'm not getting out of this one, I feel him wrap his arms back around me. A hand stro starts to stroke the back of my head softly. I'm not gonna hate you for something this stupid. Ted gently pulls me off him so he can look me in the eyes again. His face is stern, but there's so, so much warmth in his eyes that my heart bedumps in my chest. Just don't pull something like this again. You never know what'll happen to you. I nod quickly. I'm just relieved he's still here by my side. Alright, now that I've found you, we've gotta get going. We can't stay here. Ted takes me by the hand and pulls me out into the hall. We gotta call my pops and tell him about this. You might have to explain yourself all over again, but at least we can send out a search on those bastards. We'll get you somewhere safe. Use what you know, and I'm sure you'll get enough to get him. Ted looks over his shoulder at me, appearing a bit flushed. I'll protect you from this perp no matter what, Nicole. I ain't letting them lay a hand on you while I'm here. Ted's remark is so sincere that I inexplicably end up sighing like a girl saved by some superhero. Even now, he's just as methodical and organized as he always is. It's really admirable. I squeeze Ted's protective hand. You're such a knight. Shut up, you. Despite the situation, I end up giggling at his, at, a, at his childish response. I'm cut short, though, by the sound of someone clapping. Ted and I come out into the wide hall. The cracked window on the side, of the side are still able to stream in light. And standing in the middle of the rubble and the moss is... Oh, it's you. Jeff! What are you doing here? There's no mistaking his Jeff. Clapping his hands slowly, he stops the moment he sees we've recognized him and wears a smile like he couldn't care less. You've done it, Nicole. Congratulations are in order. My proper escape, and now comes time for the final confrontation with the villain, no? Jeff brings his hands up to his chest and slowly lowers them as if setting himself on display. Ugh, seriously? There's no time for this. Jeff, stop joking around and get going. I don't know how you got here, but... Hold on. It dawns on me, how would Jeff know about this place on his own? Okay... He was my first suspect. If he is actually the guy, then yay me! My first instincts were correct, mostly because of the drugs. It dawns on me how would Jeff know about this place on his own. She asked you a question before. Why didn't you answer it? Ted's voice is deathly low. He must have realized the same thing. And it doesn't seem like they came together judging from his reaction. I already answered it in a way. You two must just... You two must have just reached the same conclusion as well. I must be what I claim to be. I'm behind the abductions. I can even prove it. I called you here with my last message, did I not? And here we are facing each other on the abandoned battlefield. At least that's how it was supposed to be. He gl Jeff glances at Ted annoyed. I wasn't expecting to call Grave plus one. Sorry, I wasn't part of your plan. Ted keeps level, but I can tell he's about ready to lose one on lose on. He's about to get loose on Jeff the moment I see he sees an opening. I can't let him do that just yet. Why? I thought this abductory guy was some huge creep, but it's just been you? I don't get it. Why would you take these girls like that? I simply need to further my own gains, and I picked the appropriate subjects I needed to make this happen. It's not as though I hurt them, nor were they missed very much. What gives you the right to say that? What gives you the right to say that? Yuli Shears, you remember her? She was the girl you took last month. There were so many people who were sick about her, someone like you wouldn't get the good she's done for this place. Jeff scoffs as though he's heard a bad joke. I'm sorry to be the one to inform you, but your crush was misplaced. Just drop it. I, I didn't have a crush on her. I'll let you both in on a little secret. As you may have already guessed, after I abducted someone, I made sure to return them to the spot where I found them. Yuli Shears was already having the time of her underage life when I, when I made my move. I barely needed the soporific I had prepared. Oh, I didn't see that coming. 
You see, I hadn't stripped an angel of her wings. I merely caged their ambitious troublemaker hid within. I made it a policy to only take those who, frankly put it, deserved it. A kind, generous girl who turns out to have an excessive love for the party life. She was someone who would, was better off in confinement than the outside world. Hypocritical of me to say, sure, but you must agree. No, I don't agree with that at all. I, I can't say for sure if you're lying, so I won't waste my breath trying to defend her. But if what you say is true, that don't mean Yuliet was a bad person. People ain't perfect. I've come to realize that now. The bad things she did shouldn't outweigh the good she accomplished. You had no right to judge her on your own term like that. What, what you did wasn't deserved by anyone. Jeff reels back like Ted's words are blow to the face. He's really got him on the ropes with that. However, Jeff soon regains his composure and is back to smiling crookedly. Something about him seems more off than usual, though. Well, it's no matter. What's done is done, and now that the jig is up, as it were, it seems I must make my move. Jeff takes out a small ball with a, with a string poking out on the side. Though the way he shows off a lighter... It's only when he shows off a lighter in his other hand that I realize that string is a fuse. You have won this bout, Nicole. It was entertaining, to say the least. Poor Dad and I have a chance to act. Jeff lights the ball, ball up and throws it at us, filling the room with a blue-colored smoke. Ted and Jeff, when I finally reach the front, I see them exchanging swings and kicks back and forth like they've been, they're in the middle of some kind of dance. They look exactly the same! I honestly don't know which one's which because they both had a, they both had the, the coat on, I think. Neither of them can get a clean hit. With both of their speeds, it looks like it's a fight to see who wears out first. Finally, I get to have what you've had come. I get to give what you've had coming for your longest time. He aims a swing right for just chest, but Jeff evades back like a boxer and counters with a jab of his own. I'm afraid you'll find it's you who will be getting what's coming. I can't just stand here like this. Ted! Ted nearly, nearly, Ted's nearly hit with the jab as he turns to look at me. Oh, you sneaky ba bastard! He loosens his jaw, then rushes forward, pushing Jeff back with his offensive. You've done a lot of things in our day, but threatening Nicole like that is the one thing I'll never forgive. Oh, really? And what will you be doing about that? Ted ducks under one of Jeff's swings and retaliates with a quick shove to Jeff's shoulder. It's obvious, it obviously doesn't hurt that much, but what it does is send Jeff back against the wall of a close-by stone wall. Jeff gra gasps in surprise as he meets it, since... Si <laughs> Jeff get... Oh, someone's getting tased. Jeff gasps in surprise as he meets it. Seeing this chance, Ted pulls out something off his belt and flicks a switch on it. Oh, is that a stun gun? It certainly is, and before Jeff has a chance to recover, Ted jabs the electrified tips right into, into his neck, sending bolts of electricity running up his spine. Ted lands down his spine. For two reasons. One, you're hitting above the neck, so it can only go down to hit the spine. Uh, I mean, unless you count a couple of cervical vertebrae, but I think you don't. Uh, and also, uh, electricity grounds. Up and down his spine. Jeff convulses in place and take, taking his chance, Ted rears his free hand back then slugs Jeff right across the jaw, sending him back against the wall. The force is enough to send his eyes rolling to the back of his head and Jeff quietly slides down the wall until he's lying limp on the ground like a ragdoll. Never underestimate an officer's son. Oh my gosh, Ted, are you okay? Nicole. I run up to him to see, as soon as I see the coast is clear. I thought Ted was going to get seriously hurt there. You shouldn't have yelled out like that. He almost popped me on there. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I was just really surprised. But you did it, Ted. You were so cool. I leave him to Ted's arms to give him a hug. I must have taken him by surprise because I hear the stun gun off go off in his hand. I hastily hop back a step and glare at Ted like he's judging me. S sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Blushing, you flicked. I've done that in a store once. I didn't mean to. I had it on my side with one of my old jobs, and I went to make sure it wasn't bouncing, and I hit the button. So I just like, whoops, and I just kept running out the store. <laughs> ah, blushing, he slicks the switch off of the sun and sticks it back in his belt. Oops, I just, hold on. I just hit a button because I dropped my remote. Back a button, please. Okay. Never thought I'd get a chance to use that thing. <laughs> Makes Phil sort of like a real cop. Do you just carry that thing around with you? I work late nights sometimes. It's a safety precaution. Ted grins a little and pats the sun gun on his hip. Besides, it's manlier than mace. After making sure that Jeff was both not dead and not cold, Ted called his dad to report the situation. What are you saying just happened? Ted flinches back from his phone. Ouch, even I heard that, and Ted didn't even put Ron on speaker. And they used to say Ted's dad wasn't very happy to hear what we went and put ourselves in danger like that, but on the plus side, he did say it was impressive to have caught Jeff all on his own. 
We kept watch over Jeff for about 20 minutes before we saw the first cop car pull up to the abandoned building soon. There were no there were even more cars and the whole street was eventually blinking with red and blue. Red and blue. When Ron got there, he pulled us aside to give us an earful on his own. It's kind of funny, both he and Ted had these weird expressions on their faces. Ted looked totally tight-lipped and mortified while Ron just babbled on, unsure of what to say. He must really not have to lecture Ted that often if they were both so unused to it like that. In the end, though, they hugged each other and they pulled me, to, pulled me in to make it a group deal. What a couple of sweethearts. But Ron had a job to do, and when Jeff finally recovered from all those volts, Ron wasn't the one to cuff him up and lead him to the police car. Ted and I have to go down to the station, too, for our official statements and all, and all that. By the time it was over and the chaos had died down to the mile raw, it was pretty late at night. Still, I couldn't help but think of it as a beginning of an end. We caught Jeff. We actually solved the multiple disappearance, disappearance mystery. Those were the words that I drifted off to when I finally got a chance to sleep. It's been a few days since everything happened. The town still buzzes with the news while the police are doing what they can to sort everything out. However, for the most part, it's been peaceful. Things are slowly turning back to normal. In fact, I'm on my way back to work right now. There's that little ding as I step into the convenience store. Whoa, I'm still surprised that everything's up. I thought Ted would have started cleaning by now. Speaking of him. Hello, anyone here? There's no one behind the counter right now, and I doubt Ted would leave the store empty to sit in the back room. Nicole? Right behind me. Right behind me, I turn around, and there's Ted with an empty box in his arms. What are you doing here? I thought, I, I thought you were headed back home. I missed the store's last day. I couldn't do that. There's been a change of plans. I needed to rock out this hot uniform one last time before I left. I just threw up myself in the gray jumpsuit. I don't even have it rolled up like I usually do. That's mostly because of Ted. I figured he'd appreciate it if I wore it like it was supposed to be at least once in my time here. You can argue that it's kind of late for that, but that's when I'd start ignoring you. Ted chuckles. Ted chuckles at me and places the empty boxy down. <laughs> Ted chuckles at me and places the empty box down on the floor. Down by the door. He said something. Ted chuckles at me and places the empty boxes down by the door. I'll get it. I got it. Take your usual place, then. I'm just going to get ready to move on to the merch when the day's over. Well, I can help with that, too. Ted eyes me suspiciously. Looking for more excuses to avoid your family? Whoa, you're sharp. I should have figured you'd catch on eventually. I saunter on over behind the counter so I can rest my elbows on top of it. My mom and dad are totally pissed at me for not saying anything sooner. I can relate. I lower my eyelids at him from across the counter. Not helping. So yeah, I kind of don't want to deal with that right now. They're not that mad. They said they'd ground me if I if I hadn't. They said they'd ground me if I hadn't brought Jeff to justice. They're just being so smothering and annoying. <laughs> I can relate to that too. Pop seems to be watching me more carefully than he used to, but I think we'll find we'll be fine eventually. Stop it. Stop what? Uh, I can't explain it. Whenever you talk about your dad, you always have this annoying look on your face. You two are all, you are two are way too close. I hate you guys. Don't be jealous. I'm so jealous. I wish I was that close to my dad. You should stop by not avoiding him. Okay, we're talking about... Okay, we're done talking about my parents now. I hastily end the subject and start rubbing my hands over the countertop, trying to commit every last inch to tactile my memory. I'm going to miss everything, believe it or not. I spent a lot of time here. Playfully open the cash register and giggle at the noise it makes. Like, who knows when I'll be able to hear that again. <laughs> well, all you have to do is find a new cashier job. Problem solved. But I, it won't be this register. That's the thing. I just have a ton of memories to this place, even if they're nearly all of them are working together with you. That might be the one thing I'll miss the most. My voice goes a little quiet as I wait to see how Ted reacts. Was that too much to say? Should I have kept quiet? I'll miss all of that, too. He lets out a haggard chuckle as he rubs the back of his head. If I'm being honest, 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 if I'm being honest, I've been trying my hardest not to think about it. This store was the most important thing to me. So now that it's closed down, I was worried I'd take, it'd take a part of me with it. But it's better this way. I've let all that go, and now I can focus on other important things in my life. My school, finding a job, taking care of my pa, and you, Nicole. <laughs> the way I see it, losing the store is a fair exchange for finding you. The atmosphere between us changes as Ted approaches me, eventually making his way behind the counter. I look at him, unsure what he's about to do, and suddenly find his hands in mine. Aw. He jerks me forward, so I collide with his chest. Whoa, hey! I'm really gonna miss you over the break, you know that? I've been doing my best to be mature out here. Be the mature one here, but damn. Ted has his hands locked around my waist, and I carefully perch mine on his chest as I smirk at him. Guess it's finally my turn to be the mature one. Shut up. <laughs> I'm grinning as he kisses me. Unbelievably happy that I'm in his arms like I am now. I know that coming to the school led me to being a target for Jeff, but it's like Ted said, it's a fair exchange for finding him. Eventually, the two of us part from kissing, grinning like idiots with swollen lips. 
Isn't there some ethical code against inter-workplace romance? It's the, it's the last day and all. I figure I can let some things slide. Ted grins at me as he walks from behind the counter back into the aisles. Ugh. I was right, though. It was Jeff. I, I suspected him from the start. But still, no slacking. You gotta do it right from the start to finish. Yes, boss. I smile as I straighten out my uniform trying to take from Ted's example. Doing things right from start to finish. Yeah, I think I've done a good job of that so far. Okay. Yay. I mean... Let's be real, they didn't they didn't really make it hard to figure it out if you unless they wanted some really surprise twist, it was quite easy to figure out who it was gonna be. Ted was too busy to do abductions. Uh Maudry Kurt was too busy to do abductions. Um The other guy is just a quiet nerd who is scared of everything. Barely likes to be touched, doubt he's gonna go drug people. Then you have Jeff, the crazy psychopath who likes working with drugs and the women are found with drugs in them. Like... Unless they were going for something really shocking and surprising, it was clearly Jeff. Now, I wonder though, if it changes. Now that's a question I'm gonna- I'm actually gonna look that up right now. Cause what if it does change? Depending on the thing you play. Yep, he's always the kidnapper, and, 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 and if you, apparently if you date him, you still promise to stay at his side forever. Because, yeah, that's how that goes. I'd be like, yep, yeah, nope, you crazy. You crazy. Alright, no more reading. I don't want to do any more reading games. The next reading game I'm going to do is going to be this damn thing, and I have to do acts. I have to do a lot of voices for this one, and I don't really want to do it right now. So what I did is I downloaded a different game, but I'm not going to play that right now. I'm going to go take a break. Because the post-nasal drip is getting to me. But now we know. We, I was right. It was Jeff. And I gotta be with Ted. And I apparently giggle my ass off because every time he says shut up before they kiss. And I don't know why that makes me laugh. My romance life sucks. Alright, gotta go now. Bye-bye.